And now for something completely different. Hi, my name is Annie Grossman, and I'm a dog trainer. This podcast is brought to you by School for the Dogs, a Manhattan-based facility I own and operate along with some of the city's finest dog trainers. During this podcast, we'll be answering your questions, geeking out on animal behavior, discussing pet trends, and interviewing industry experts. Welcome to School for the Dogs podcast. This week's episode of School for the Dogs podcast is brought to you by SaneBox. SaneBox is basically EMT for your email. As messages flow in, SaneBox does the triage for you, sifting only the important emails into your inbox and directing all the other distracting stuff into your Sane later folder. It's awesome. I love it. I use it so that I know what messages I really need to pay attention to now and what stuff I can get to later on. It also has nifty features like a sane black hole where you can drag messages from annoying senders you never want to hear from again and sane reminders to ping you if someone hasn't replied to your email by a certain date. Best of all, you can use SaneBox with any email client or phone anywhere you check your email. See how SaneBox can truly magically remove distractions from your inbox with a two-week free trial and $15 off at schoolforthedogs.com slash sane. If you're into following dogs on Instagram, and really I don't know why you wouldn't be, (laughs) you've probably come across an account called Toast Meets World. Toast, uh, who sadly passed away last year, was really one of the first megastars of Instagram. She had over 350,000 followers. She appeared in Vogue and on Good Morning America. She was in Harper's Bazaar. And it's tempting to say she brought all of this upon herself because she was just very, very cute and particularly memorable because she had this funny face with a tongue that was always sticking out. Um, But I'd say the real reason for her success was the powerhouse publicist who rescued her, Katie Storino, uh, who I was fortunate enough to interview for this episode. Katie now manages several Instagram accounts for her dogs. Uh, She continues to manage Toast's account and also her late dog Underpants account. Uh, she's she has a real talent at naming dogs. I think they're all very funny, very unique names. And when she isn't on Instagram, she is managing the lives of three dogs right now: Muppet and Cheese, who like Toast were both rescued from puppy mills, and then Sock, who is a 16-year-old Shih Tzu. Uh, who moved in with her when her fiancé moved in with her. And there, there are just so many amazing things about Katie. I mean, beyond the fact that she is one of the only people I've ever met who has lived in a Manhattan apartment with five dogs, uh, although now she's down to three, I think what's coolest about her is the way her career has kind of evolved and thrived in these unusual, exciting directions because of her love for dogs. Having these uh, insta-famous dogs ended up leading her to get attention for a blog and Instagram account she started for herself called The Twelvish Style, which is basically about how to look awesome in celebrity-worthy clothing, even if you're not a tiny celebrity-shaped person. She uses the term body neutral, which uh, I really like as an alternative to the whole body positive movement and as someone who is a pretty solid size medium um i don't know it it i think it's a it's a nice way to label yourself like can i just be a normal sized and healthy person and not have to uh, attach myself to some kind of movement but there's more so she went from being a dog publicist to i guess what you might call like a plus sized fashionista blogger to a product developer. She recently launched a brand of personal care products called Mega Babe, and it's all stuff that like solves lady problems that I don't think anyone else has ever tried to touch, uh, and few people have 
ever even tried to talk about in a public way. Two of the most popular products in the line are Bust Dust, which is a lotion meant to tackle boob sweat. (laughs) And then the stuff called Thigh Rescue, which is for what I like to refer to as Chub Rub. And let me tell you, Thigh Chafe is not something I'd really dealt with before, but I'm currently five months pregnant, and because of this, my inner thighs have developed a whole new relationship with one another. So I traded Katie for a stick of it in exchange for a few rolls of my uh, Donald Trump dog poop bags, and I love it. It's made it possible for me to wear dresses again without having to put bike shorts underneath. Anyway, I asked Katie how she identifies herself. Is she an entrepreneur? Is she a product developer? Fashion icon? The label she chose for herself, however, was Dogger, and I'll let her her explain exactly what a dogger is it's a like the evolved um chris kardashian version of a of a dog manager that's hilarious yeah yeah i've, I've heard other people say i, I want to be chris the, jenner or, i think i want to be the chris, chris jenner yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but who knew this is the world that that we would live in um and uh so you didn't didn't grow up with dogs no, I was obsessed with dogs. Okay. I had a big giant breed book when I was little that I used to carry with me and I would just go over and review all the breeds and I just, I loved them so much. And my parents um, were like, no, you cannot have a dog. And then one day we got a kitten and that- You were like, that's not a dog. And I was dog. like, okay, not a dog, but it's an animal. So um, her name was Kitty. And I grew up with Kitty, who was, like, not friendly, bit my ankles, would hide under the couch and attack me. Not a dog. Yeah, not a dog. A cat, if you will. So that's that's kind of what happened. And then um, right after I was able to, so I started working for myself, um, I was, like, probably 25. So just just to back up, you grew grew up in Milwaukee. Yep. And, uh, And then you moved to New York? I moved to New York right after college. Where'd you go to college? I went to University of Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, what brought you to New York? Uh, I, during the summers during school, I interned here to work in fashion because there's not that much fashion in Milwaukee. <laughs> Were you doing fashion PR? Uh, yes. Yeah. So How I, did you get into that? I wanted to get into fashion, but I didn't want to deal with numbers. And I thought I wanted to be a buyer, as I think like every girl does at some point <laughs> who likes clothes. <laughs> And then you realize you're buried in spreadsheets, and that's what being a buyer is. Um, so I went into PR because I wanted to be able to interact with people. And um, and then I, I started working for myself because I hated the environment. So did you get a dog when you moved here right away? No, I didn't. I had to wait. Um, a, a while I waited. Um, but I started fostering. I fostered a dog through... Ooh, what is the rescue that sits at Union Square? Uh, Mighty Mutts, maybe? Yes. I started fostering through Mighty Mutts, and I had a, a dog named Wolfie um, for about six months. We fostered her, and she was old, and she bit people. Eventually, she had to go to another foster. So that was your first? That was my first in-home dog, mm-hmm. which was... I loved her. She was super exciting. And then... Um, and then I got, I rescued a Great Pyrenees mix puppy from Alabama named Baron. And Baron lived in the city with me for about two years. And he got, he got people aggressive. So uh, people and dog, but people was the main concern. Um, and in New York, like you're in the elevator with people, you're on the now, phone with you people. had him from when he was a puppy? Yeah. And he just, he, it, it just like came out of. Hmm. nowhere or somewhere but I, I I don't know where we went to trainers here it just didn't it it wasn't working here for him so I sent him to live with my parents in Wisconsin and oh what we, hell's that it's good like we we sent you him know, to, sometimes not being in New York is the solution it's just he wasn't a New York dog yeah and that's like not not every peep not every person is meant for New York not absolutely every dog is I meant feel for like that too I think yeah I think that um it's hard for a lot of people to be in New York. Yes, <laughs> right? yeah, yes. Let and it just wasn't dogs. for him. Mm-hmm. We sent him to like a, a behavioral but, camp. Like, by the way, that doesn't mean I think there's some dogs like you can work with them. But totally, but that doesn't mean a wrong answer is is finding another home for them. Yes, 
Um, it's just yeah. I don't actually think rehoming is a bad thing for anyone. I think it's yeah. almost less selfish. Mm-hmm. I know a family who has like a cocker spaniel who's high energy. They had kids, and she ends. She's in like her crate most of the day. Mm-hmm. She'd be better off with a big, with like mm-hmm. a different family. Yeah, you know. But people feel guilty, and they're like, right, I can't right or they, and they love you. their dog. It's it's hard. Yeah, it's it not is. easy. It's hard. Um, so, how did you get into? Now, I, I should say right now. Tell tell me the accounts that you manage because that'll help introduce some of these dogs that yeah, are here. We are um, we're here with three, three hilarious dogs right now, which we'll introduce in a moment, but. The, the history, I guess, starts with Toast. Yeah, so Toast uh, Toast was my first account. She wasn't my first rescue, actually. I got Muppet. Muppet was my first rescue after Baron. Um, and then I learned about Puppy Mills. How um, did you learn about Puppy Mills? Because they were both Puppy Mill rescues. And, and where did you rescue them from? Um, Muppet was from North Shore Animal League. Mm-hmm. She was from a mill in Missouri, which is where a lot of the Puppy Mills are. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that pet stores get dogs from these... Um, factory farm style um, facilities and that the parents of the dogs are kept in the cages and given no interaction and no love no care what gave you an education on this um north shore animal league yeah because i was like this dog's so cute what's her deal why is she here did someone dump her here and they're like no she's from a puppy mill I was like, what's a puppy mill and then i like flooded back to all my interactions with pet stores where i was standing in the window waving at the puppies and Suddenly, I'm like, oh my god, this is I this this horrible. I didn't even know that I'm basically waving at this like terrible situation and uh, bringing a positive attention to it. Um, so Toast was five when I got her, and all her teeth rotted out from having the puppies and no vet care. Um, so she had just this little stinky tongue that hung out, and she was so cute. And and she was a uh, English toy spaniel. Or she that? was a King Charles spaniel. Okay. Yeah, Charles, a Ruby, yeah. and um, and she was just a, she was like a real, she just stole people's hearts. So I I decided a couple years into her living with us, and Instagram was becoming more popular, that I wanted to start um, an account for her, just to just because I thought she was special and everyone who met her thought she was special and I thought we could really like do funny pictures and get you know um, get more awareness for puppy mill rescues so it started off like that and then what year was this? 2012 2012? Mm-hmm. 2013? Mm-hmm. something like that um, but I but Instagram dogs weren't happening it was just tuna, like from tuna mouth to my heart, and and Jif Palm, no, not Jif Palm, um, Boo. Mm-hmm. It was just Boo and Tuna were the only dogs that people knew about, and Grumpy Cat. That was it. That was the animal scene at the time. Were you doing fashion PR with Instagram at that point? Like, was that part I was of just your job? Do- by no, then? I mean, I, not really. Like, it was still early, and brands were figuring out how to engage socially. Um, but I could see that it was coming. I felt like Instagram was going somewhere and I, I took Toast on as a bit of like a client. So I was doing fashion PR. So I I just, I reached out to my network. I did who were at betters with her. I I dressed, her, I dressed her up in, um, in different um, like movie character outfits and just started sending these photos out to different editors and seeing if anyone would pay attention. And in the beginning, everyone was like, I love that. So it was like a passion project, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah. Or an experiment. A, no, it was a total passion project. Um, for but, like six months, yeah. it was like me putting a lot of time and effort into it, and everyone else being like, "What are you doing? This is weird." So um, I love that. <laughs> so, I mean, you. I mean, did you think like I'm going to make money off of this eventually? As, as much as it was a passion project, did it seem like, no, 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 I see where this is going, or even if I, you don't? Like, I saw the possibility for where it could go, but at the time, it wasn't happening with anyone, so I, did, I didn't, I mean, I, I've had other ideas in the past where I'm like, this is it, and then it's not <laughs> it, so I was just hopeful, right? But, um, yeah, that ended up being a really incredible life-changing experience and toast did so many cool things and she got married on real housewives and yeah she wrote a book and she was uh did you have was there one moment where you were like oh this is actually going somewhere 
Oh, I think Barney is. Or was there like a certain number of like followers? No, the followers hit? never grew in the way I thought that they would. Like so many dogs have more followers than she does. How many followers? Does she she have? had. Um, she when she passed, she had like three hundred and seventy thousand. Mm-hmm. So she never got the amount of followers, but she must have had the right followers. She had. A, she had a quality following, as they call it. Um, but she, I think Barney's approached her to like do something like just n- not for money, but just to have her at some event. And, I, and then I was like, well, this seems important. <laughs> um, You're like, I got my dog into Barney. Yeah. As my, my dog is like taking Barney's pictures called. of Barney's. I'll take it. Um, I love that. So that was, that was very cool. And then the social media thing kind of started to blow up yeah, from and there. like brands really started to use dogs as actual like advertising vehicles um and the i think through toast instagram with like the adopt don't shop message that we were promoting i think that a lot of people got to know like what a puppy mill is why you sh- what like what the potential is for a rescue to be like beautiful and cool and not damaged and we did a um a national billboard campaign um around adoption and like how sheltered pets are like stars and how they're cool and they're not Mm -hmm. like not sad but Mm -hmm. like a positive thing there's no reason that a shelter dog is any is necessarily any less happy than any other dog yeah (laughs) or more damaged or more prone to have problems right but that but that you know the photos that you see of shelter dogs are usually like poor sad dog you know needs a needs a home whereas you know the dog that might have been having an awful life in a puppy mill, but now is living in in a glass box at a puppy sh- at a puppy shop isn't branded to look. You're sad. right. It's part of what part of what's interesting about it for you is that you're also vegetarian. Yeah. I think because I, to me that means like you're really standing up for a, a much broader cause of treating animals yeah. fairly. Because I think people tend to um, think you know. Cats and dogs are one thing that But are... we have such a disconnect with an, with cows, horses, pigs. Like, we we think that... Like, um, they're less than us. A, or that us. there's, like, a difference. People are shocked that they wouldn't eat horse meat, but they'll eat cows. And what's the... What is the difference? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's weird, for example, though... Like, I think it's really weird, and I'll probably make some enemies by, by saying this, but I think, like, confirmation breeding and training is really weird. What's that? Well, like all the stuff that you see at, you know, Crufts or Westminster yeah. or any of that, um, it's all breeding. It's basically eugenics. It's like, how can we breed a dog that is this specific size yeah. and has ear shapes that are exactly like this? And, yeah. and the winner of the best in show is like the one that conforms most to whatever the breed has decided it is. Like, yeah. Which is crazy when you think about it. It's like if we were trying to breed all people to look like... yeah. I don't know, Jennifer Lawrence or something. You know? Yeah. Like, how is close is this person to that ideal? And um, and so much of of um, breed trends um, stem from that. I mean, maybe maybe we're moving away from that a little bit, unless with all like the doodles and everything, which aren't part of that. But well, I mean, at I... least at least most people with like dogs who aren't official breeds, I don't think are breeding. I don't I don't know how much doodle owner, doodle breeders are like trying to breed like. The, the ideal doodle. <laughs> no, I feel I've seen a lot of fucked up doodles on the sidewalk too. Like I've seen like some weird short leg doodles, some super tall doodles, like just some weird things ended in a weird place for them. I don't think that's weird. I don't think that's any weirder than you being like I'm larger than everyone else in this room. Yeah, frankly, we, okay. we all come in different sizes. It's true, and you want a dog, but that's... the expectation for a doodle breed, right? Because people have expectations around like the standards of what things look like. People might have expectations, but not in the same way they would for like a um, a Springer Spaniel yeah. or a Doberman, okay. where it's actually written down in a book, yeah. like. This is what, and that's what the confirmation breeding yeah. is. I actually think it's cool that, that that dogs can be in such varied size. Yeah, because like, it's it's actually healthier, you know, genetically. Oh, oh it's, it's it's healthier that they not all be way. the same, yes. you know, the same breed, and uh, you know, and and all breeds started out as some kind of mix, of right? Some kind. Anyway, so you got Muppet first. Yeah, and then you got. And, and Muppet is a Cavalier King Charles. Muppet's a Cavalier and King then, Charles. And was he from North Shore? She's from North Shore. Sorry. And then um, 
host was from um, an, a Humane Society mill raid in North Carolina, and then she came up to get fostered in New York. Foster Toast kept her, mm-hmm. and then and I got um, underpants th- two and a half years ago. Um, and she was a she was in the mill the longest. She was eight years old when we got her, and she had she had uh, some cancer tumors and some eye business going on from her time there. But other than that, she was pretty cool, and she was a very interesting dog. Um, she didn't really ever fully bond with people the way that. Uh, the other guys have but I don't know she was very special and very interesting and did she bond with you not really not in the way that you not in the way that these two psychos behind me have like they're they've got to be near me they've got to be on me they're watching me pants was like doing her own thing and that's I think what made her really cool so you started this account you started to get people started getting interested in in rescue and uh was this before or after then you started the 12 style? This was all before. So it, the, the 12 style actually started because I met the Man Repeller girls on a NARS shoot for Toast. So it... Interesting. <laughs> yeah. She was there as like a model for this... Uh, See, part of what I love about your story is I feel like um, part of my, my goal, I guess, with this podcast yeah. is to is to show all the different jobs you could have that involve dogs. Yeah. And because I, I always think that growing up, it d- never occurred to me that I could be anything other than a vet. And if I wasn't going to be a vet, I wasn't going to be able to work with dogs. Right. Because, you know, I, I, I didn't think I could aspire to grow up and be a dog walker. That didn't seem, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it wasn't, um, you know, exciting enough. Yeah. Um, and I, but I was like, well, I'm not going to be a vet. I, I don't think I could do that. And so, therefore, I can't do anything. But here, you took your this passion well, this you is a had. Very modern career that we have here, and right. who knows how long it'll be around. But there, if you really look, there's dogs in ad campaigns. There's dogs everywhere, and those dogs typically, I found, are a different type of training. Um, they're like they're just a different. They're like a higher performance dog. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're they're there to do certain on-command tricks and um i'm sorry do you mean the dog are you talking about instagram famous dogs no i'm talking about like uh ad campaign movie that kind of dog Mm -hmm. um those dogs typically i find are they're working with like they're working in a more traditional sense where they're working with like a trainer that has them like doing like rollover like crazy like hoop things and like barking yeah commands. but a lot of the time the dogs that are like in ad campaigns and stuff aren't doing really anything much more than like a really good sit stay yes you know? yes yeah but i feel like they pull those from um traditional animal training mm-hmm. agencies so, so so this which is not what i do mm-hmm. um and there is there are like specific dog agencies now and um, right, what, I, but what, do you think of yourself as an agency for your dogs? No, no. Um, or for other dogs? I, I'm no, no. You said not what I do. I'm just trying to understand. Oh, uh, what I do is um, more like commercial. Um, well, part partnerships, would you call? Yeah, it? partnerships. So, because sometimes it's just funny to me that like we're posting photos of our dogs and sending them to each other at all. Like, how would you expl- explain that like to a dog? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's like yeah, it, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Like, you have all these fans of people that you don't know. But Toast... Who will probably never meet you, Toast but they're excited. Toast knew she was famous, though. Toast was, like, more... I don't know. She had, like, a whole thing going on. She was just more <laughs> aware. I swear. You know? And she was a real professional on, like, the photo shoots. Like, she, like, could... It's like she could speak. It was very interesting. So, um... That helped you then move up, move on to non-dog related Instagram. Yeah. Instagram, because I guess it's true. You almost have to think of it as an agency. It's sad to say. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining you actually kind of as an agent for your dogs. I, with, with, I with, am an agent for the dogs. The, with, yeah. With a, um, what's the word? Uh, rolling roster, because sadly, you know, they're gonna. Some That's of them are true. gonna, but they all are going to die yes. eventually. Yeah, it's true, especially when you're rescuing seniors. And so it's this funny kind of brand that has like a, an expiration date. Yeah. So do you see yourself continuing to, to rescue? Of course. There is no other option for me. Where do you rescue from? How, do you have a process? Um, 
I think I start to get like obsessed with the idea and I'm like I really we need to bring someone else in like I want like like this is who I want this is who I see for us and then I, I go for that dog mm-hmm. so very rarely actually zero of them have been found through the process of like oh like she came to us and it just worked like I went out seeking the type of dog I was looking for not necessarily for Instagram but for me like with pants, I wanted a funny dog. I wanted a dog that would make me laugh every day, and she did because she was just so weird. Her face was so funny, and uh, and I, I I looked for her face. Like hmm. I wanted the face that was going to make me laugh, and that was her. How how has it been bringing one dog in with the other dog? Because sometimes that can be a tricky thing to navigate. It's never a thing. There, it's like these girls are more. Um, there, it's more like a like a cool girl click like. They won't let you snuggle with them on for like a month. All, all three of them? They So I, we're down a couple dogs in here, but um, when when it was the, when it was Pants, Toast, and Muppet, when we would foster, they would like not snuggle the foster dog until like a, a couple weeks had passed and they had some like time with him. They're like, fine, you can sleep with us. And then um, when Cheese came, they were, like, so mean to Cheese. Not mean and, like, barking or growling, but more, like, just icing her out. And then and then eventually they were like, okay, you can sleep with us. Um, but they're, they they snuggle with each other then? Oh, yeah. They, they don't try and like get to pile. bed with you? I, they love sleeping in my bed. They love it. But I had, I, after I had four dogs in there and like. It was too many dogs. Someone had to get up and get water. Someone had to go to the bathroom. Someone was stepping in my face. Like it was just, I was up all night, <laughs> every night and it, for, for no reason. So yeah. we started having him sleep out in the hall. Yeah. My yeah. dog, my dog sleeps in bed with us, but I also sometimes get grossed out when I think about like him walking oh, sure. on the street all day and then I don't like clean that. his face. Yeah. Yeah, just or that I like kiss cheese and she, all she does is lick pee. <laughs> But, like, I love her. So what would you suggest to someone who's interested in trying to get their dog insta-famous? Um, I would suggest that you come in with a really specific angle that is not happening already. Because I feel like people think that they have a cute dog and they can just take pictures and it will become famous. Which is not the case. Um, we're actually trying to think about how to reshape Toast Instagram. Um, obviously to keep it as a rescue platform, but to find a more, like a better personality fit for Cheese and Muppet, because mm. that's who's here, right? So um, we're trying to figure that out. So I, You mean like getting a, a, a dog that's a new Toast? No, like just a new angle. To photos you already have of Toast then? Or? No, like a new angle for new themes to post with Cheese. Okay, yeah. in Toast's account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, um, rather than just give cheese her own account, yeah, is, we have, this, is this a conversation that was considered? Um, well, yeah, because uh, Toast has quite a lot of followers, mm-hmm. so it's not like something, and that that's you really don't want to throw it away. Yeah, so and you um, can't just change the name. I is could that bad. Form? I could totally change a name, but to what? Cheese meets world. I don't know. I don't, that's, cheese on toast. I, these are all the names I thought of, which is so funny that these are the two first things you're saying. But yeah, that's uh, that's um, that's been discussed, and it just hasn't felt right. So mm-hmm. I'm still workshopping. Interesting. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's an yeah, interesting it like is. modern day question. I know. It's very Your dog weird. dies. What do you do with their Instagram account so you can still leverage the 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 following? The following. And like, cheese is oh so God. cute. So cute. And has such a good personality. Maybe we need to make cheese into a training star, you can have, and you can do half her doing tricks. I, I think tricks are fun for her. Too. How old is she? She's only four. So tell me about bringing sock into the the, mi- the, the mix. Yeah, um, sock was sock was like a total surprise surprise to my life, I guess, because I didn't anticipate having a a dog who we I didn't bring in the house, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, but she's, she's interesting because she's so old and she's blind, um, 16. Oh my gosh. And the dogs really are very gentle with her and, um, they're, they're nice. Like everyone gets along and she, she doesn't snap at them and Sock's mostly just interested in food. I like dog names that aren't like 
people names. I hate people named dog names. <laughs> Bella. Is There's no a word. lot of Bellas. <laughs> Personal question, if you, if I, if I may. Sure. Did your you're engaged? Is that right? Yeah. And you're engaged to socks socks person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did he know about your dogs then before he met you through social media? No, he didn't. No? No. He so didn't. what was his reaction when you were like, by the way, my well, dogs are famous? Um he was like less shocked than I than you would think someone would be. Most people who I was talking to or going on dates with when you say that my dogs are famous, the they like don't really know how to react to it because they're like, Alright, like, oh you're crazy. Um so I, it's like I, I let people in on that really slowly because you, <laughs> you, it's already enough to have, I had three dogs at the time that I was single, so. Right, it's a lot going into it's, any relationship. It's a lot, yeah, dogs. it's a lot, like a single woman with three dogs seems. But you know what, weird. when I think you, you have to set some kind of, uh, like, test I guess in a way I, the I, way I think of it I'm it like totally if, if you're gonna love me with yeah, my three dogs yeah then... you gotta take the dogs into account and that meant like everything that means like you're, wa- you're mm-hmm. cool with walking them you're cool if they're just like pee in the middle it of the room be, like, like you want it's... you want to find someone who's like excited yes and that not, not and just like okay I'll put up with that it, right? for me what was my fiance he like he came in right great, in great as a dad yeah like, wonderful. and that was a lot and Sock didn't move in with us for a while it was like his he mom his he place. brought from like the old country. Like he waited until we were all like settled, and he was like, "I've got someone for us." And I was like, Ugh, "I already love you, fine." Um, no, so sock has uh, sock stays with her mom sometimes, but her primary residence is here. Oh, all the more people to love her. Yes, all uh-huh. the more people to love She's her. She's very loved. And so now, what's your main business? I mean, what's your so the the dog stuff led to your 12-ish style stuff, which I think is so cool and it's such Thank a great you. idea. I mean, Thank like you, you said, you, you kind of need a gimmick, and I think you found a really great Thank one. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, and then... Um, I guess how, how, to, to people who aren't familiar with the 12-ish style... The 12-ish style is a, it's a blog about accepting your body, yourself, everything at every size, and um, through over time, it's become more of a, like an activism place, calling people out who are not accepting or um well i like i like your your notion of being body body neutral yeah right? oh you really know yeah huh? I, yes. I think i think that's a great way to be about it like you know what dudes of the world this i don't is who need I to am, draw and, like, like glitter on my stretch marks like i don't need that <laughs> level of like body love i just need to not say things to myself in the mirror as i pass by yeah Right? Like yeah. That's, that's where I am. You, ne- you need to feel like, you know what, this is who I am. And yeah. Like, life's we're too here. short for me yeah. to be wasting all exactly. that time. And like, do Let's I wish certain things were space. different? Exactly. I'm totally on that page. Yeah. And I think like, I'm glad someone's saying that. Yeah. You know, in Thank a way. That's, but, um, but I would say the, the gimmick, the gimmicky part, gimmick in a good way, it would be your uh, dressing up as. Supersize the look. Um, Supersize the look is uh, where I take a celebrity style and I just help translate it into a curvy body type. And what gave you the idea for that? Um, well, I found myself, and I think I've always done this, getting inspiration from other women I see, especially in New York, and celebrities have become, like, or I think... Inspiration, what, you mean, like, I like what that person's I wearing? I like what that person's wearing, I like their vibe, I like how they've styled this, how can I make it work for me? Mm-hmm. It's basically how I get dressed. Uh, and celebrities have stylists, right? That they, they've got a whole payroll of people who make them look good everywhere they go. So I figured that that's where, that's like a great place to get inspiration from. Um, and I, I, I think it's helpful because a lot of people talk themselves out of trends or clothing types because they're like, oh, I can't pull that off. But I, I like to show people that hopefully that they can. That's neat because I think it's, I mean, having seen it, it's like the right mix of like helpful smart and but also like um what's the word like um 
Wink, winking. Yes. Kind of. That's you're... the super size, right? right like, it's yeah. like, it's, a, it's like a, this, meant to be funny. Right. But yes. you're also like, but the, you, the you look clothes, good in the, in the clothes. Yeah, the are, clothes aren't meant to be serious. Like, there's a, there's a, it's a subtle, it's comedian. subtle though, the way that you're able, I think, to do that because. Thank you. Yeah. There's a comedian named Celeste Barber. I think she's Australian and she, like, does, um, she does like side by side comparisons of like photo photo shoots where she's doing like a mocking version of like what a real person would look like if they were doing this. But that's not my my intention with the outfits is certainly not to mock them or look silly. It's actually to just show you you can wear something. Mm-hmm. Um, but from Twelve Ish Style, um, I got the idea to launch Mega Babe, which is my women's personal care line, uh, because I wanted to tackle things like thigh chafe and boob sweat in a way that wasn't being done. Um, and I launched that a year ago. So that's been awesome. Well, I, I've been experiencing some, uh, some chub rub myself. Yeah. I, I brought, I brought you, um, for trade for a stick of mega babe if possible. Oh yeah. My, my Donald Trump poop bags. I love, I love your Donald Trump poop bags. My fiance is really going to love these. This is awesome. No, you're going to have a totally different experience going home with a stick today. Today is when things change for you. Awesome. That's, that's really cool. Well, you know, when I was writing, I, I, uh, when I was like working as a journalist, yeah. I wrote an article about, um, maybe 10 years ago about, um, like stuff for men with bald heads yeah. and like that as sort of a niche market yeah. of like different razors people could use yeah. and different gels people could use to get like a matte head or a shiny head. And, and I remember thinking like, Oh wow, this is so cool. This like weird little niche market. That's actually not little. No, but that a bunch like, no, of bald men right, like nobody yeah. ever does. It's just like no one had thought of this. No, it's before. not sexy. And, um, and I remember thinking, What's another like thing like that yeah. that you know everyone experiences but like has not been addressed like you kind of found it. I yeah. Think. Yes. I um What's the next? No, what's next? Don't smell like dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always very conscious of that. I hope my house doesn't smell like dog. No, but t- do you have any tips on how to how, how to, to not make- smell like dog? Yeah. Um I do a lot of um laundress spray. Is that a home. brand? Yeah. Yeah, is that they, they have better like, than Febreze? Or yeah, it's like a Mrs. safer, Myers? less um, like a non-toxic version of that. Laundress spray. Yeah, and does it have a scent or does it just take away scent? It has a scent, so it's basically it's like safer Febreze. And then um, interesting. I I don't know. That's we a I, good tip. I have a housekeeper that comes once a week so that we make sure like the floors are clean. They oh have accidents God. all the time. It's the day after the housekeeper leaves, it's like oh, it's <laughs> so good, but it only lasts for like twelve hours. Uh, and yeah, I just try to, I just, I just am very conscious of scent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's hard to keep a house clean when you have three dogs. That's yes. a fact. We had five in here. Really? Five. Yeah. Wow. So having three dogs now, and I know that you have people who work here and you have your, your partner, but yeah. like how many hours a week do you think you spend caring for your dog? Not that much. No. No. Your dogs, I should say. No. I don't think so. I think the morning walk, I go get coffee. We walk for about 45 minutes mm-hmm. and. Like, that's a big part of my... It's, like, one of the, my favorite parts of the day. Don't you find it's hard to go get coffee when you have the dogs? Do you have a... What's no. your trick there? What do you mean? Well, because a lot of places won't let you bring in a dog to oh. get your coffee. Yeah, dog-friendly place. That's where I go. <laughs> What's they, your dog-friendly yeah. place? Um, do tell. <laughs> yeah, the Highline Hotel right here. They have an intelligentsia oh, okay. inside, so it's well, really... Well, that's because it's a hotel. Yeah. Yes. yes. See, that's yes. the trick. Hotels are more lenient. Then, yes. Yeah. You know what and they are a dog has changed hotel. my coffee life what? Is, is the Starbucks app oh. because now I can like order ahead and like run in with my dog and run oh. out so I don't have to like wait inside and get yelled at. Oh, oh um, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of just bringing them in everywhere. You know, I am too, but I've, yeah. I've gotten in trouble. And, yeah, totally. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I just, I, uh, I feel like it, it puts such a, um, it makes it hard to integrate your dog into your life when you can't bring them to places where they wouldn't necessarily be a bother. Yes, I but agree. like if you or if you're doing errands and one of them is going to the post office, you know. The post office is such an issue. I don't know why they're not allowed in there. Right. Like, what are they going to do to the mail? I, I think know. it's. I think it stems from some. Uh, dog. <laughs> some deep seated. That's dog funny. Postman. Yeah. Well, I I've brought my dog to the post office, and you know, and I, I, I run an online store, so I end up at the post oh, office. Oh yeah. And uh, I've brought my dog to the post office, and then like put him in the backpack. 
Oh. And I've gotten yelled at even for that. Really? Like having him in a backpack. Oh, yeah. I think, you know what? I think as long as you know, as long as you're not being a jerk about it and your dog so behaves. So I just, I, my husband and I were just in Europe for two and a half months and like oh. they're so different there with dogs. Yeah. Because I think that's it. Yeah. Like I think people in Europe just expect you, like if you are, if your dog shouldn't be in this in a public space. If your dog can't, they, yeah. If your dog can't deal with being in a restaurant, like you shouldn't be bringing your dog right. there. And they're not going to. Right. Like right. it's just a, a, rather than it becoming some sort of righteous thing. Yes. It's like I should be able to bring my yes. dog into this. Yes. I know. Whatever. Whatever. But it's um, like, yeah, and they're actually pretty good in in restaurant settings and things like that. Um, which is great. Yeah. Right. And it's made a big difference in New York now that you can eat eat, eat outside oh with God, the dogs. Yes. Too, that right? was the stupidest rule. Right. Right, it was With like the, the dog had to be outside the barrier. That barrier, and then they're they're crawling, clawing at the barrier the whole time. Like, Why am I? It was so stressful. I hated that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, are the are the dogs gonna like make the food dirtier? I don't know. But again, like you, I think you people need to use their judgment. Right, and I and I think probably people don't. Probably people don't, but yeah. you know, but but people kind of do with kids, right? Like no, no, <laughs> I don't know. Ish, I don't know. Um, any recommendations you have for someone looking looking to rescue a dog? Um, start at Pet Finder. It's like online shopping for clothes, and <laughs> you can just sort like what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think fostering is awesome. It's a really great way to test a dog out in your home and see how it's going to do. And and I think that's so true too. So many rescues need foster. And the other thing about fostering, it's like. Like everybody wins. Yeah. Because, like even if you don't keep the dog, which you might not or probably won't. Yeah. The dog is still getting something. Out I've of, never kept a foster. Yeah. That wasn't the dog is still trying getting yeah. something out of being in a home yes. setting with someone who's paying Agreed. attention to him. You're helping him get where they're going. Absolutely. I yeah. love that. And it and it you know makes um, the shelters all the less yeah all the less crowded. Agreed. Oh my God, you guys are just adorable. You know that the cuteness factor off the chart. Big thanks to Katie for taking the time to talk to me. You can find her online at the 12 ishstyle.com. I will also uh, put a link to her various projects in the show notes. And uh, fun dog fact of the day according to the New York Times, the most popular dogs on Instagram are pugs, bulldogs, chihuahuas. Huskies and Terriers. Also, sort of interesting fact, I guess, is uh, Katie actually used to be married to another Instagram powerhouse, uh, the Fat Jewish, who has an interesting account, although not as cute as uh, her dog's accounts, I have to say. Our woof shout out this week goes to our student, Mini Golden Doodle Terrence, uh, who we call Terry. He can be found on Instagram actually at Terry the Dude. That's Terry the D O O D. Terry has been a day school regular uh, in our drop off day school program for about two years, and he is just one of the sweetest, fluffiest, loviest dogs I've ever met. He really looks like a sort of apricot colored teddy bear. And um, he just gives me the biggest greetings whenever I see him. I think everyone on staff is in love with him. And sadly, he and his humans are moving to Brooklyn uh, because um, he is going to have a set of uh, human twins in his family soon. So they're leaving their East Village abode which means they're not going to be coming to day school with him anymore and we are going to miss him so much uh so terry please come back and visit we love you oodles and oodles and uh also special thanks to alex chris for producing this episode and to our sponsor sanebox you can get a two-week free trial of sanebox plus 15 dollars off by visiting schoolforthedogs.com slash sane I've used Sanebox for years to organize my email. My latest trick is 
you know, I don't know if you guys do this, but I do, is I email myself all the time, like things that I need to do. So half of the emails in my inbox are both to and from me. But one thing that you can do in SaneBox that's really helpful is email your future self. So I can uh, send an email through SaneBox really easily right in my Gmail account to myself in a week or in a month for things that I know I'm going to have to deal with but don't have to deal with right away. And that really helps me clear out my inbox but also make sure that uh, I stay on top of things I need to stay on top of, which uh, is certainly helpful. Thanks so much for listening. You can support School for the Dogs podcast by telling your friends about it, leaving a review, or shopping in our online store. You can learn more about us and sign up to get lots of free training resources when you visit us online at schoolforthedogs.com.